Hello, I'm MC Toon. You know these anti-5G nutters, they like to make lots of claims. Specifically, they like to claim things about 60 gigahertz and what it does. Now, they never support themselves with any evidence, any scientific studies, any, well, anything at all. Um, but they still make these claims, expecting their gullible followers to just gobble up whatever they say without bothering to check. Listen to this one from Dana Ashley. 60 gigahertz, even at lower powers, is causing the electrons on oxygen molecules to spin. And as you might imagine, changes to the spin frequencies on oxygen electrons can have impacts on human biology. But the unfortunate impact of oxygen molecules spinning the electrons is that it makes the hemoglobin unable to uptake the oxygen and get it to the rest of your body. Now, this info was taken from a textbook called Magnetobiology, Underlying Physical Problems. Yeah, Dana, you never looked at that book, did you? Um, it's available online if you look for it. I have the PDF. I looked for it, and I searched through it for hemoglobin, blood, 60 gigahertz. All of the things that you said was in there isn't actually in there. So, Dana, I don't think you looked at it. I think what happened is you heard somebody make a claim. You didn't do your own research, and then you repeated that claim. Hmm. Dana, you better uh, do a little background next time. Maybe she heard it from Joe Imbriano, who said this. And the 60 gigahertz Wi-Fi is going to affect your oxygen's ability to bind to the hemoglobe. When you hit these oxygen molecules with this electromagnetic frequency, you affect the spin properties, the orbital properties of these electrons. That affects the hemoglobin's ability to bind the oxygen. Well, Joe gets it a little right. It does affect the spin property of the electron in the oxygen molecule, but it does not change its chemical behavior. Unless, Joe, maybe you have some evidence to support that, maybe some citations, some experiments that were done, or maybe a, you know, at least a physical description of why it might do that. No, you don't, Joe. You have nothing. I've looked at your videos. All you do is you make the claim and expect people to believe it. But um, it's not true. That's not where Joe stops. Joe takes it to the next level in his insane claims. 60 gigahertz is a weapon. When you irradiate oxygen molecules with 60 gigahertz exposure, you affect your body's hemoglobin ability to bind the oxygen molecules. They're messing with the, with the orbital properties of the electron spin of the diatomic oxygen molecule. That's right, Joe thinks it's a weapon. Um, yeah, he doesn't really have any idea, uh, but he loves to make this claim. He says it changes the hemoglobin's ability to uptake the oxygen, but doesn't ever, ever explain why. There's a good reason for that. He doesn't know. He's completely clueless. He made it up or he heard somebody else who made it up or somewhere along the line, somebody made it up for sure because there's no evidence for this at all. But uh, once somebody tells a lie, other people pick up on it, like Lana Poo. That is the 60 gigahertz. That chip is oxygen attenuating and it will prevent your blood, the hemoglobin, from taking up the oxygen. 60 gigahertz, which is within the millimeter waves of the microwave spectrum, it attenuates with the oxygen molecules. And what happens is that it makes it spin in a certain direction, the speed of the, of the spin, as well as knocking the electrons out of orbit that causes your, uh, your cells, your blood cells, the hemoglobin to not be able to take up the oxygen. Oh, Lena. Oh, I'm so disappointed. You completely missed everything. Uh, of course, you made the same claims as everybody else that it uh, prevents hemoglobin from binding with no evidence. We know you can't support that. There is none. Um, but then you you just go way wrong. Um, you say that it increases the spin, like makes it spin faster. That's not true at all. Um, the property of spin isn't really spinning. It's either up or down. That's it. Or it's parallel, anti-parallel, but it doesn't actually like spin like a bicycle tire. 
you need to check up on your physics there, Lena. Then she gets even worse. She says that it can knock an electron off of the oxygen molecule, which of course we call ionization. Um, Mark Steele gets that same thing wrong uh, in a different way. Lena thinks that it just knocks an electron off. Well, a 60 gigahertz photon has 0. 0.00024 electron volts. That's its energy. The minimum ionization level for oxygen is 12 electron volts. That's 50,000 times too weak, Lena. You better, you better check up on your physics there, Lena. These things are easy to calculate, high school level physics. So uh, more people have picked up on it and repeated the same lie. Uh, people that have no business talking about this topic at all, like, for example, a Botox injecting nurse might have made this very same claim. And what what that uh, frequency does, 5G, is it, it causes the, it stops the oxygen binding to the hemoglobin, the protein portion of your erythrocytes, your red bl blood cells. So yes, that's right. Kate Shimerani just could not stop herself from entering into the fray of the 60 gigahertz is whatever she thinks it is. She even has such a lack of understanding that she threw all of 5G into the same bucket. Somehow it seems she thinks it's just 60 gigahertz. It's quite the opposite. But anyway, um, then she wraps around, you know, some medical terms to make it sound like she knows what she's talking about, which of course she doesn't. And, uh, you know, it's the same claim. No evidence for it. So anyway, our final entry into the 60 gigahertz getting everything wrong category is somebody that claims to be an expert. That 60 gigahertz accelerates the oxygen molecule electron and that will starve the children of oxygen in those schools. That's right, it's Mark Steele, the self-proclaimed expert. Yeah. Very, very expert. Yeah, Mark, that's precious. But didn't you also say that you're not an expert? Don't rely on me. I am not an expert in microwave radiation. Yeah, Mark, uh, we know that you're not an expert. Um, hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about ionization? What is ionization? Ionization is where you knock an ion off the uh, off an atom. <laughs> yeah, Mark, those famous words of wrongness have been memorialized on this mug. That you think that ionization is when you knock an ion off an atom. In fact, it's when you knock an electron off an atom, not an ion off an atom. But now, Mark, what do you think is the two types of ions then? An ion. There's an eon and an ion. One's positively charged, one's negatively charged. And which one's negatively charged and which one's positively charged? You asked me the question there. Now I'll have to check your data. There's an eon and an ion. Oh, yeah. Good job there, Mark. Uh, you're wrong. Again, an eon is a very long amount of time and an ion is either positive or negative. You, you, you know, have no idea. So I'll help you out here. A cation is positively charged and an ion is negatively charged. There you go. No, not non non ionized. The spectrum, the non ionized non ionizing radiation spectrum doesn't cause ionization, but that's only natural occurring. I can cause ionization right across the whole spectrum. I can cause ionization using sound. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Mark doesn't really understand anything about ionization. He says you can cause ionization with sound. Maybe he's thinking about sonoluminescence, but that isn't actually directly, even hypothetically connected to sound causing the ionization. Um, it's easy to, to just say that Mark is not an expert. Very, very expert. Even if he says it. Um... But then he goes on, he he has some other claims about 60 gigahertz that gets even wilder. Listen to this. 60 gigahertz. If I get if I put a signal into an oxygen molecule and it actually starts to uh, change the orbital properties of the oxygen molecule, your hemoglobin kind of pick it up. If I pull a lot of amplitude into it, I can actually break the covalent bond. 
So there you go, Mark Steele doesn't understand anything about this topic, even though he thinks he does. He says uh, if he puts enough amplitude into it, it'll break the covalent bond. Well, I suppose if you were able to put enough energy in it to get it really, really hot. Of course, that's not going to happen at any power levels that you'd, you'd see coming from a you know cell tower or a Wi-Fi router or your phone or anything. You would need many, many thousands of watts of power to do that. Uh, but Mark doesn't understand power. So anyway, there it is. There is this, this series of people making these same claims. None of them can, can support it. So here's my challenge, though. Support it. Dana, Joe, Lena, Kate, <laughs> and Mark. Um, I challenge you and your, your, your rabid acolytes to go find the actual primary research that supports this claim that hemoglobin uptake is affected by 60 gigahertz in oxygen. You won't find it. I know you won't find it. It's a rhetorical question. It's not out there. I know. So you people out there making all these lies about 60 gigahertz, it's time to stop. I mean, or or you could just, you know, do your research and send it along. I know you won't. So there it is. Um, I will be explaining in a future video what does happen to oxygen molecules when they absorb 60 gigahertz photons. So be sure to click on the subscribe button, hit the bell to so that you know when that video comes out. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.